Hey guys, so I'm just going for a walk to rent a motorcycle and I'm going to take you guys with me and I'm going to give you some tips and tell you the best way to rent a motorcycle here in India. So the first thing you need to do is find somewhere to rent a bike from. So it's going to be cheaper if... Yes, hello, what's hello. up? Hello, <laughs> every single day. No way. I oh my god. Can we take a selfie? Yeah, chalo, chalo. Okay, one minute, one minute, one minute. All right, where was I? So when you're renting a bike here, you're gonna want to find a rental company, right? So check online. Go online first, if you book online, you're gonna save money by renting in advance. Rather than turning up to a place like Srinagar or Delhi, going to the market and trying to rent because they're gonna try and, and charge you more. You're not gonna get that online price locked in. So yeah, always rent in advance if you can. Now, when you turn up to the motorcycle rental company like we are in a minute, they're gonna ask you for three things. They're gonna want your passport, they're gonna want your driver's license, and they're gonna want a deposit. And now your driver's license is important because if your country doesn't have an agreement with India, which says you can use your license here in India, you're gonna need to bring an international driver's license with you. Luckily, New Zealand and a lot of countries have an agreement with India, so it's fine for me. And the deposit, that is usually five to 10,000 rupees. And it's just so if you damage the bike in any way during the trip, they'll take the repair money out of that deposit. And I've damaged my bike so many times. Check out this bridge we're crossing right now. I should not be vlogging here, right? But anyway, I've damaged a rental bike before. Um, me and Gaurav are coming up a Badalacha Pass, one of the highest mountain passes in the world. And we both slid on black ice and yeah, the bike got totally wiped out on one side, indicators were gone, the steering wheel was all, all bent and that was a nightmare. So I lost, I lost my 10,000 rupees, but it's only about $200. Repairs here are really, really cheap. Parts are cheap and labor is cheap. So don't worry if you damage one of these bikes, it's fine. No one's going to get angry and it'll, it'll get covered for quite a cheap price. So yeah, once you've given those three documents, they're going to hand you over the bike, you might have to pay some kind of, maybe you have to pay half of the rental fee up front or sometimes full, it just depends. And then you're free to go, you're out of there. When you get back, they're just gonna assess the bike and see if there's any damage and that's it, you're done, you've rented a bike. Now there's a number of tips you need to know before you rent a bike here in India though. And the first one is, don't take a bullet. I know they sound great, that thump, thump, thump sound, but the issue with them is they don't have such great suspension and Indian roads aren't amazing either. So I always take a Royal Enfield Himalayan. It's got long travel suspension and it's just the best bike for touring around India. I've ridden it 62.5% of the way across India from Delhi to Goa and I've taken it all the way from Leh to Delhi to Srinagar and back to Delhi again. So yeah, I spent like maybe 10,000 kilometers on the Himalayan and, and it's a bike I always choose when I'm here. And the thing about booking in advance, if you book in advance, you can lock in that bike. I haven't booked in advance this time, so I had to call around so many stores to find the bike that I wanted. These damn dogs are after me. They'll chase your bike, but yeah, they won't do anything. And now when you're renting the bike, there are a number of papers the rental company needs to give you. You need the insurance papers to prove that it's insured. You need the pollution certificate, and you also need the ownership papers. So if the police pull you over, they're going to ask for these three things. It's just part of, part of Indian law. You've got to show them this. The bike has to have insurance. You have to be the owner of it or, you know, be able to show the ownership papers for the person you're renting it from. And then you got to show the pollution check. So make sure you get those when you rent a bike. Some states here in India, you're going to need permits, especially in the Northeast. You're going to have to report to police stations when you arrive in a state. You can carry spares if you want, but I've never, ever needed the spares and when I have broken down in a remote place like a village, a village has always been there to fix the puncture or help me out whoever they can. If you want to carry spares, probably carry uh, some fuses, a spare tire tube and maybe a clutch cable. These seem to be the things that break a lot. And it goes without saying, bring your riding gear, wear your riding gear. Don't ride without a helmet or anything because the road rules are so different here. It is a completely different way of driving. And I've actually made a video on how to drive a car here, so check that out. I'll make a motorbike specific one at some point. 
We're nearly at the rental company now, so I'll show you the exact process. Okay, so this isn't a traditional bike rental place that you get in Delhi and Karol Bagh in the market there. This is a Kashmiri's house and they're running the bike rental out of their paying guest house. And this is very traditional of Kashmiri culture. Everybody sits on the floor like this. And as soon as you get here, they offer you tea. And someone is calling me. Hello. So they're bringing the bike for me right now. I'm just waiting here for 10 minutes and, and having a tea and yeah, the bike will arrive. I'm just test riding the bike now and it's a Royal Enfield Himalayan. They've lowered it so it's super low. Usually it's a lot higher and the clutch pull has been adjusted. So it's got a really, really short clutch pull. But otherwise it seems fine. Just test ride the bike and make sure everything's good about it, okay? Make sure it rides fine before you take it. And check out and note down any dents or any issues with it before you take it, okay? You don't want to come back and they say, hey, you dented it when you didn't. So I'll actually take some video of the bike before I go. Okay, so this is the rental agreement. Yeah. And you just sign here as well. Cool. So this is the ownership paper, no? Okay. Insurance paper. Ins ownership insurance paper and you <coughs> do you need a pollution control certificate here? Pollution, I don't have pollution. You don't have it in Kashmir? No. Okay, fine. In Delhi we need it, that's all. Okay, so I've test ridden a bike and we've done the deal 1500 rupees a day and I'll be paying 10,000 rupees as a deposit on the bike and that'll go towards the final cost. If there's nothing wrong with the bike when I bring it back. So that's it, I've got the bike. It was much easier than renting it in Delhi at Kurol Bag, maybe because I was renting it from a family, I guess. But the real test will be when I bring it back and see what they say because it's always a bit risky renting something here. You never know when they're just gonna try and screw you for your deposit. This happened to me last time actually, they tried to screw me for, for my deposit. Anyway, let's see. Okay, so the first problem has happened. There is not enough petrol in the motorcycle to even get to a gas station to fill it up. It's already run out. The bad start, eh? Okay, so I've got a new tip. Check the petrol before you take the bike. Like, shake the tank around and just see if there's like at least a litre in there to get you to the next petrol station to fill up your tank. Because people return the bike with no petrol, unlike overseas where you're meant to return it with a full tank of gas. My saviors are here. We're gonna get some petrol in the bike. There we go, bro. I'm back at the hotel now and I've just checked the bike again and the right rear indicator doesn't work and this is very, very loose. And clearly this bike has been in an accident before because you can see here it had to weld something shut and you've got a brand new indicator there. So someone has fallen and screwed fallen on this side of the bike before. So I just text the owner and just let him know these issues so they don't come back to haunt me when I return the bike. So yeah, I've had a chance to give it a good test now. Okay, so that bike was a huge hunk of junk. It had been in a really, really serious accident before. The welding was screwed. The clutch kept getting stuck and I found that the clutch wire had been installed wrongly and it was being burnt by the exhaust every time I rode the bike. And then the windscreen started to come off basically like they hadn't even screwed the windscreen on. It was just stuck on with some, with some like really big fat washers but they hadn't secured it with any nuts. So yeah, worst bike I've ever ridden in my life and Thank God nothing broke on it while I was on that ride. Yeah. Thank God. Anyway, I just dropped the back. The guys weren't there to receive me. It was just one of the one of the women of the house. So I just paid them the, the remaining 3,500 rupees that I owed them. And that was that. So make sure you check your bike like really, really thoroughly before you rent it. I had no choice. I had to take it because it was the last Himalayan left here in Srinagar because I didn't book in advance so don't make that mistake now book in advance and really check that the bike you're getting is not going to break on you or has not been in some major accident before you take it because at the end of the day they're going to try and pin any kind of issues on you I wouldn't be surprised if this guy calls me 
and tells me that the windscreen is loose just because I rode it, even, even though it had nothing to do with me, or that the clutch lever is quite stiff. So yeah, let's see what happens. <laughs> 